everybody. Joe Joseph here for the dailysheeple.com and this is your news shot. Let's go to the Guardian who had a great Sunday piece today revealed Facebook's internal rule book on sex terrorism and violence. That's right. So apparently uh, the Trump administration isn't the only one that's dealing with leakers. Apparently Facebook now is dealing with leakers as well and it says leak policies guiding moderators on what content to allow are likely to fuel debate about social media giants ethics. It's very interesting. Let's um, first point out the fact that Facebook is a private corporation. And because it's a private corporation, it can do what it deems necessary to police itself, meaning that it does not need to allow you or your content on Facebook. To Facebook, it's a privilege to each of the 2 billion users out there that utilize Facebook. And let's be honest, people were steered this way for a reason. Much like Google has become so powerful, they've been steered this way for a reason. And what's been allowed to happen, of course, is monopolies have been formed and or very close to monopolies. Let's just call them oligarchies. And these oligarchies, uh, whether it be Facebook oligarchy or the Google or oligarchy, uh, have basically taken over social media, Twitter. And now because people are so reliant on them and because much like Standard Oil at the end of the 19th century would just go scoop up any competition that would be even a remote threat to John D. Rockefeller, well, Mark Zuckerberg is doing the exact same thing. Anytime there's even a hint of there being competition, he'll scoop it up and shelf it, much like eBay and PayPal did uh, back in the 2000s and early uh, 2010s, 20-teens. They went and they scooped up all the competition, making it virtually impossible to find a payment processor outside of PayPal that didn't utilize your standard processing machine or uh, processing uh, infrastructure. So it's just very interesting to see the playbook. Now, it says Facebook secret rules and guidelines for deciding what its 2 billion users can post on the site are revealed for the first time in this investigation by The uh, Guardian. And it's sure to fuel the global debate about the role and ethics of the social media giant. Now, let me say this. Um, in a perfect world, what should happen is people should be able to post whatever they want to their social media platform if, in fact, it is a public platform, which this is not. So because of that, again, Facebook has every right, just like you would have every right if it was your social media platform that you develop to be able to say what can and can't be on your social media platform. With that said, once it becomes so big there does become almost a duty to make sure that rights are respected. And the problem is, once you start going down the slippery slope of deeming something offensive and this isn't, now it becomes a, a, a giant slippery slope where you're never going to satisfy anybody. Where the proper thing to do would be to let everything fly on the site. And I know people are like, man, you know, I, the, the killings and the suicides and all that stuff. That's great. You don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch it. Okay. If somebody flags it as offensive, Facebook can just as easily put offensive warning on it or something like that and still let it go out. Now I'm not condoning putting suicides on the, uh, on Facebook, but once you decide that something is not appropriate, then what ends up being appropriate and what ends up being not appropriate? It becomes a huge problem for anybody that has to face this. And um, so, so they, uh, basically the whole uh, revelation is that they really can't keep control of the content because Facebook has grown so fast, so quickly, that they're having a hard time keeping up with it. And what happens is, is they're just attacking certain sectors of, the, instead of going after, uh, say, individual offenders, 
they're going after demographic areas, a la the whole fake news BS. That is a demographic. Okay, so you break it down. All these sites, they go into a uh, demographic. You are labeled fake news. Therefore, you will be censored, period. That's it. Done. Instead of punishing the individual for maybe, um, you know, putting out something offensive. No. Now it's a blanket policy. And the problem is some things fall into that and some things fall outside of that. The right thing to do, again, is to let everything fly and then personal responsibility you know, if you have children that visit Facebook, then you need to be watching what content they watch or what they're uh, subscribed to. It's same thing that we grew up with uh, before the Internet. You know, parents had to police what you watched on TV because there was inappropriate content. It's the same thing today. Only now, everybody has access to this thing because anybody with a smart device can get on Facebook. They can get on social media. They can do all that kind of stuff. It takes a measure of personal responsibility from parents, from responsible individuals to ensure that if you don't want to see something, then don't look at it. But if somebody feels the need to put it out there in the public domain, they should have every right to do so. Absolutely every right to do so. And once you start trying to deem what's acceptable and what's not, you're always always going to piss somebody off. Always. And it's never going to end well. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's new shot. Feel free to comment below and visit us at our website, thedailysheeple.com. Have a great day.